Hey y'all, I'm Fran Agulto with the Developer Relations team at WP Engine with Headless WordPress. And you may be asking yourself lately, now what's the deal with server-side rendering and React server components and are they the same thing? And why do they sound like the same thing but can be used together separately or not at all? Now this situation would even make the great comedian Jerry Seinfeld pull his hair out. Well in this video, Let's define the two concepts and look at some examples of ways to use them with WP GraphQL and Headless WordPress. The first thing we're going to want to do is define server-side rendering. So server-side rendering, or SSR, is an application architecture in which it's the server's job to render a single page application. Server-side rendering is easier on the client's device because you only send a rendered HTML file to them. In SSR, when a user requests a web page, the server dynamically processes the request and generates the corresponding HTML content. Now this process can involve fetching data, rendering the page's layout with this data, and then sending the complete HTML to the client's browser. Now in the context of using SSR with Next.js, the server processes the React components and then the HTML is rehydrated into a fully interactive React app in the browser. Now the methods of server-side rendering are as follows. So reducing initial load time by sending a fully rendered page to the client. It improves SEO as search engines can crawl the server rendered content. It does require a Node.js server to render the React components and then it shares a common code base for both server and client rendering. Next, let's shift our focus to React server components. By definition, React server components are components that allow you to write the UI that can be rendered and optionally cached on the server side. In Next.js 14 and its new app router, the rendering work is further divided by route segments to enable streaming and partial rendering. The focus that helped me understand the two concepts is not the similarity they share with the word server, but instead it's the difference in the word component. At a high level, a server component is a small part of the UI that you have granular control of. To break this down even further, by default, React server components are rendered on the server. However, unlike traditional server-side rendering that outputs a complete HTML document, React server components render to a unique format that describes the component tree. Now this format is then sent to the client over a streaming protocol. During this process, the server sends over a representation of the component tree rather than a fully rendered HTML document. On the client side, this stream is received and used to hydrate the React application. This process involves React understanding the structure of the component tree from the stream and then creating the corresponding DOM elements. There's a few significant benefits of React server components and some are that they allow for rendering only specific parts of the UI and only updating those parts, which provides more fine grained control to developers on what pieces of their app should be updated. This allows for less resource usage, there's less client-side code, and there's a simpler form of data fetching with more rationale as each component is in charge of fetching its own data. Now that we have defined React server components, let's take a look at some code examples in Next14 using one of my favorite plugins to make WordPress headless, which is of course, WP GraphQL. Now, just for context, the default data fetching behavior in Next.js 14, for those of you that don't know, is server-side rendering. Let's take a look at this page.jsx file here in my headless WordPress example. And this is the home page, which is the index page in the new app directory. Now, I'm not going to go over the entire code block here, but instead, let's focus on the way this file is fetching data. Now to fetch our data, this component by default is a React server component and we define an async function up here named getPost as you can see, and this grabs the first five posts of your WordPress site along with title, content, and the URI. Then we await a get request using fetch to grab the, da uh, the data from the grab WP GraphQL endpoint here. And then this request will be cached on the network and not the Next.js server. In the object, we have the content type header of the request and the cache option of fetch with the value set to no store. This tells Next to bypass the cache and have everything fetched anew upon every request. 
right here. The main thing to notice here is that we did not need an actual function to use SSR. Rather, this is code that runs on the server. Now, the other thing I wanna clarify and focus on is the cache no store key and value. By default, Next.js will cache data. However, since we made the value no store, it tells Next.js not to cache this and it runs every time on the server. If you just set no key or value, Next.js will statically build this page and at runtime and then cache it. Therefore, every time data is fetched, it is dynamically rendered. To highlight what is being executed, the whole page is not rendered, rather the component is. So let's ensure this is working. Uh, let's go ahead and run a production build in our terminal. Let me clear this up here. Run build. Okay, and this is perfect because at the very top of the image where it says app here, you see that forward slash and that's the page.jsx file that we have within our code. And this lambda here symbolizes the fact that it is applying server-side rendering to that page. So let's go ahead and npm run start to run the server and test out the application. Here's the browser. Great, it's working. And now let me go ahead and inspect the page source to see if we get fully rendered content of the post data. Here is the actual fully rendered content of my post data I'm grabbing from WordPress in this initial HTML response. Stoked, this is working. I'm back now in my Visual Studio code and let's now talk about hybrid rendering. Incremental static regeneration, or ISR for short, is a rendering method where we want to create the page and then check every so often if there is a data update. This is the same home page for the previous section and let's focus on the data fetching syntax for the example here in this fetch request. Now, the thing to key on is the next.revalidate option here and the difference in this code snippet from the previous section in the video is this is the syntax which is called the next.revalidate option. The value of 60 means that every 60 seconds, next will check to see if data is updated on the page. In this case, we are using this and pairing this with server-side rendering. This is saying to show data for 60 seconds before you revalidate to check and see if there is new data. We render it at the time of request, but if it changes before the 60 seconds is up, you will still see the old data. Once the 60 seconds is up and you navigate back to the page, you will see the accurate updated data quickly. I encourage you to test this out on your own. Now you can set the revalidation at different levels as stated in the docs. You can set it at the component, the page and the layout level. I'm now back in my Visual Studio code and I've opened up an old Next.js 12 legacy pages router. Now in this version, this was based on the pages. What this method does, it has a file system based router built on the concept of pages. When a file is added to the pages directory, it's automatically available as a route. Now to server side render a page in next 12, you would use a function called get server side props. This function runs on the server for each request and enables developers to fetch data that is required for rendering a page. When using get server side props, the data returned from the function is passed to the page component as props. Now, just to note, the major difference in using this method versus React server components is that the entry point was the page component. The whole component tree is rendered to HTML before being sent to the client. This is great for initial page load, but this does not give you fine grained control that React server components do. If you would like a deeper understanding and dive into the differences and benefits of React Server Components, please look at the YouTube description because I left the article by Vercel in there. Now let's take a look at this example here. This is the index page or the home page in this next headless WordPress example. Let's focus on the, the way this file is fetching data via server-side rendering. To do so, we have the get server-side props function right here. Then we have our query grabbing all the post data 
then the function returns an object with props, which has the post array and is passed to the page component as props. If you want to check and make sure this SSR is working on the page, you can do the same check we did in Next14 with the npm run build script, which builds the production uh, level application, and then you run it on the server with npm run start, and then you can inspect the page source and see the fully rendered HTML post content. All right, y'all, that wraps this up. In conclusion, server-side rendering and React server components are two powerful methods in Next. Understanding their functionality and features and pairing them with WP GraphQL make for accurate updated data for users. I hope you have a better understanding of how this works. As always, stoked to hear your feedback and any questions you might have on Headless WordPress. Hit us up in our Discord and happy coding.